Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel where again we will be looking at the high screen Pentium 75. In this video we're going to be taking a look at what kind of games you can run on this Intel Pentium 75 megahertz. Because remember, we're talking 1994, 1995 here, and that's before 3D acceleration was a thing. So our ATI card here will probably play second violin to the Intel CPU. But that means that we obviously need to get some games on the machine. And for that, I'm going to be using this little guy here, which is an Intel Ether Express Pro networking card, also manufactured by Intel. And I think it fits really well with this motherboard and the entire setup. It's also Intel branded. It has more or less the same look and feel. So yeah, a really, really nice match. I also like the odd shape of this card, but let's plug it into the computer and see if we can have it detected by Windows 95 because this should be supported out of the box. So let's load up the add new hardware wizard. So this will spend some time analyzing your computer to see if it has detected new hardware. I always wondered what it's actually doing in the background because you just see this kind of progress bar. Uh, slowly creeping up until the end where it finally detects the Intel Ether Express Pro 10 networking card. So let's continue with the networking setup. So we need to give our computer a name so it can be found on the network. We'll put it in the standard work group and then Windows will copy some files over prompting us to reboot the computer. Now after a reboot we see the uh, networking dialog here allowing us to enter a password which is already a good sign but before we are able to share files on the network we need to take a look here and we will add the TCP IP protocol from Microsoft and we will enable file sharing and after another reboot we should see some computers popping up on the network. Now let's take a trip back down memory lane and the year is 1994. And remember, at around that time period, MS-DOS based games pretty much looked like this, at least some of them. In this case, we're looking at Sid Meier's colonization from Microprose released in 1994. That's right, 1994. And this is how some of the games looked like in 1994. I mean, this is also a game that runs fine on a 386. So obviously the Pentium 75 is overkill here. There is no 3D whatsoever. The game is fairly slow paced, doesn't require a whole lot of resources, but still remains a lot of fun to play. If you were looking for a little bit more action packed, you could always count on Apogee here with a cool little game here called Wacky Wheels released in 1994 by Beavisoft. A racing game, kind of like uh, Super Mario Kart, but then for the PC. It's kind of a cartoonish uh, game. Again, no 3D involved, but again, a lot of fun to play. So you get to select a track and then you're off to the races where you just take out your opponents by collecting all kinds of weapons and upgrades and try to outrace them. So yeah, lots of fun, lots of fun. But surely now that you have a Pentium 75, you can take it up a notch. So let's take a look at this one. I'm Ned Jerry from Papyrus. This is NASCAR Racing. Now that's what I'm talking about. This ain't no wacky wheels. NASCAR Racing from Papyrus, released also in 1994, is one of those typical race simulation games. It doesn't have a real arcade feel to it, but it's very realistic. It gives you lots of feedback, lots of information about the car and it's, you know, racing simulation at its finest. 
Now, what we can already see is that the non-SVGA version is already a bit demanding for the Pentium 75. We need to disable lots of graphic details in order to run this game smoothly. With everything turned on, it's basically unplayable. You might even have a hard time noticing that these colored pixels that are moving on top of the car here are actually other cars that you're racing against. Now turning down the graphic level a notch does make the game very playable and you would have a very difficult time running this game on a 486. So here you can see the kind of tipping point that you had with the Pentium 75 where it's you know barely quick enough to run it on full settings but it does allow for a fun and playable experience. Now you can run NASCAR racing in Super VGA mode also, which gives it lots more detail than the standard VGA version, as you can already see here in this intro screen. With the standard uh, graphic details, it's running a lot slower, but the difference in image quality is very noticeable. Just look at the dashboard view here of the car. This is the VGA version, and this is the Super VGA version. Now again, the Pentium 75 is struggling a bit to run this game in high resolution, but if we turn down the graphics, it actually becomes playable, and this would not be possible on a 486. So this is a nice example of a game released in 1994 that is pretty demanding where you will benefit in having a Pentium. And you don't always have to run a certain PC game on a system just because you can. I mean, SimCity 2000, for example, will run perfectly fine on a 486DX266 also. But it's just a fun game to play and, you know, the Pentium 75 just breezes through it. Raptor Call of the Shadows, released in 1994 by Mountain King Studios, is also one of those games that, you know, is, is action-packed, but doesn't really require an all-that-powerful CPU, but it's just a really fun game to play. So yeah, it runs very smoothly, obviously, on the Pentium 75. Another game released in 1994 was Doom 2 by IT Software. Now this game runs perfectly fine on the Pentium 75, but then again this game will also run well on a 486DX266 MHz for example. So this is an example of a game where you know, having a Pentium um, doesn't really give you lots of benefits. But when we move to 1996 and we look at Quake, also from IT Software, we can clearly see that the game is playable and running this on a 486 would again not be possible. And despite the fact that this Pentium only runs at 75 MHz with a 50 MHz bus speed, we are achieving around 16.4 frames per second with sound on this game, which is playable. But let's move to 1997 and take a look at Grand Theft Auto. Minimum requirements for this one states a 486DX4 running at 100 MHz. So let's see how this game fares on our little Pentium running at 75 MHz. I'm running the high color version here and although it does stutter a little bit, it is definitely something that I would consider playable. Now you have to remember also that in that time period we weren't that focused on achieving the maximum FPS. It was more about the gameplay and especially games like Grand Theft Auto which kind of defined the whole genre of games. The, the game itself was superior to the FPS. If you did have issues with the performance you could run the low color version which obviously looked a lot worse. But again, because we were so focused on the game itself, we didn't really care about, you know, high resolution graphics or high color modes. I mean, the fact that you could steal this truck, for example, was just mind boggling in and of itself. Another game I played a lot in 1996, which was a game called Road Rash from Electronic Arts, released in 1995. Minimum system requirements for this game is the exact Intel Pentium 75 that I have here. So let's see how this game will run on the machine. 
Oh, I have fond memories of this game. And it's actually running really well. It's really nice to see these kind of 3D effects here, which are totally done in software by the CPU. There is no 3D acceleration. There is no, you know, graphics card, which is offloading um, the kind of work uh, from the CPU. So yeah, this is all our little Pentium 75 doing its thing. Now obviously you can't have a video like this without running DOS Bench, so I did run a couple of benchmarks on the Intel Pentium 75 just to see how it would compare against an older 486 and a more modern uh, Intel Pentium like a 200 MMX. So I ran a couple of benchmarks and I'm not going to bore you with all of the details, but there were a couple of things that stood out. Now the system was recognized correctly as an Intel Pentium 75 and most of the benchmark basically concluded what we already knew. It is obviously going to be faster than a 486 but not really by a long shot. I mean it's only when you look at you know very CPU and FPU intensive tasks that you see the Intel Pentium really pulling away from the faster 486 CPUs. You also need to keep in mind that this Intel Pentium 75 is somewhat crippled by its 50 MHz bus speed. In fact, this Intel Pentium 75 is the only Pentium that runs with a 50 MHz bus speed. Now, the system is also crippled to some degree by the absence of level 2 cache. We only have 8 kilobytes of level 1 cache uh, on the CPU. However, for most MS-DOS based gaming, that doesn't make that much of a difference. We do have a good uh, Intel chipset here on our motherboard to make up for that. So I just want to quickly pull up some charts here. I've compared four different systems. We have an IBM value point, which is a 486DX266, an AMD DX4 running at 100 megahertz, PCI based, our little high screen Intel Pentium 75, and a more powerful Intel Pentium 200 with MMX. So you will obviously see a trend that the Intel Pentium 75 is slightly faster than the two 486 systems and that the Intel Pentium 200 MMX really stands out because, you know, basically in terms of pure clock speed, it far exceeds the Intel Pentium 75. Now, what you will also see in these types of benchmark is that as soon as you enter the realm of, you know, CPU and FPU intensive stuff like Quake, for example, that the difference between the 486s and the Intel Pentium uh, really increases. And that's really the added value that the Intel Pentium platform will bring to you. Now, with the arrival of the Pentium and Windows 95, we also saw the arrival of these typical Windows 95 games. And Monster Truck Madness, published by Microsoft, is probably the pinnacle game of the Windows 95 era. So, uh, this is a game that supports hardware acceleration, something that we don't have in our particular setup here but the graphics quality is basically determined by the CPU that you have. So we're going to set it to the lowest resolution, which should be uh, runnable on a Pentium 60 or a Pentium 75, like the one that we have. I will put all of the graphics settings to normal and then see where we will end up. And again, we start the game at a resolution of 320 by 200, which was basically the standard MS-DOS uh, resolution. I mean, it's it's pretty mind-boggling to look at, you know, that type of graphical detail now in 2021. But I mean, this is how we rolled in 1995, 1996. We weren't bothered with the fact that this was running in 320 by 200. I mean. The games were such, uh, you know, fun to play, and the fact that we were able to play this on our computer was just uh, was just crazy. Again, this would not be possible on a 486. So again, a good reason why uh, a, an upgrade to a Pentium CPU uh, made a lot of sense in that era. Obviously, we can play with the settings. We can even make it even uh, more smoother by disabling certain graphics effects like, uh, you know, textures and, and skies and clouds and stuff like that. 
However, if we try to run it on a higher resolution, let's say for a Pentium 166, which is basically double the clock speed, we can see that the game again turns into a slideshow and becomes totally unplayable. Now, if you like more arcade style racing games, then Screamer from Graffiti, released in 1995, had got you covered. It gave you the opportunity to race these kind of exotic sports cars. It also had a standard VGA and SVGA mode. So let's take a look at this great game and see how it performs on our Intel Pentium. First thing I'm gonna do is go into the options and set the details to high. So remember we're running in VGA mode now. So yeah, despite the low resolution, there's a lot of stuff going on on the screen here. We see the American football helmet spinning. We should see an airplane passing over. We have lots of cars on the screen. And you know, it's definitely not 100 FPS, but I mean, it is playable. I remember uh, playing this even on a lower spec machine. It's kind of amazing how we uh, how we uh, thought that this was kind of an acceptable frame rate, but yeah. You can obviously again turn down the graphical detail so we can put it in low detail and that will give us an extra frame or two per second, but the difference is minimal. As you can see, there's less stuff going on on the screen. The American football helmet is gone. We don't have any planes passing by. So yeah, that gives us the additional frames per second. I think the, uh, the line of sight is also dramatically reduced, but yeah, makes up for a better uh, gaming experience. Now launching the Super VGA version of Screamer immediately shows that our little Pentium 75 will be struggling if we just look at that uh, intro uh, here. <laughs> Yeah, it will be very difficult. We have it on the high settings, but you know, as soon as we start it, it's just unplayable. And that's the problem with these kind of more demanding games that uh, if, if you can't tone down the graphical settings, like in this case, you can only set it from high to low. That's basically it. But even with the low details, the, the game is still far too demanding for this Pentium 75. Another great racing game is Formula One Grand Prix from Microprose, released in 1992. I didn't even realize it was that old. So let's load up the Belgium Spa track here and let's do a little race. So keep in mind that this was released in 1992, so you would typically play this on like a 486 DX266 maximum. So yeah, you would have a hard time uh, running this game with all of the details. The Pentium 75 handles it really nicely. We have, you know, most of the graphical settings enabled. We have a pretty smooth uh, frame rate. There are no slowdowns. This is also one of those games that doesn't drop any frames. You know, if your CPU is unable to, to, to handle everything, it will just slow it down and you get this kind of slow motion racing effect. And there's also an option in this game to uh, put it in high resolution or SVGA mode. And the Pentium 75 is able to run it in that mode, albeit uh, with some of the graphical settings uh, toned down a bit but it's definitely playable and the graphics are remarkably better, obviously, in SVGA mode. Now, all in all, I've enjoyed my time with the little high screen Pentium 75. I had forgotten how humbling of an experience it is to kind of work with uh, a low end Pentium system like this, you know, copying files from the network, just seeing how long it takes to copy a 20 megabyte file seeing how long it takes to extract a three megabyte zip file using the iconic WinZip application. And I've enjoyed playing these games on this little machine so much that I actually forgot to load up some actual, you know, business oriented software on the thing, which I will probably do in a future video.
Now, one of the other things that I would also like to cover is to see how much of an impact another video card would have on the system. What would happen if we added an S3 Trio 64, for example, or this Diamond Stealth 64 PCI card also with an S3 chip? Or how about this Tang Labs, the ET6000? Would that make much of a difference? Heck, I would put it in there just to see this iconic Hercules logo here in my computer. Or what if we swap out our Intel Pentium 75 for this little Intel Pentium 100 megahertz CPU? Would a 25 megahertz speed bump make a lot of difference for these games? Or should we look at adding some level two cache to the system and see how the system performs with that? So yeah, I have a feeling we're not quite done yet with this Pentium 75, so you'll probably see it in a future video. In the meantime, I really hope you've enjoyed this one. If you did, please consider liking the video or subscribing to the channel if you like this type of content. And I hope to see everybody very soon. Bye-bye.